Hey, we're live. Welcome back to the uh, IFS podcast live review. I am joined once again by Ed Grohl. Edwin, say hello. Hello, everybody. How's it? How's it going? Yeah. Good to be back. Hope everyone yeah. had a good holiday. A lot of fun. It was a good holiday. Ho- hopefully, we're, we we don't get quite as uh, smashed as we did the last time. Boy, we we had we went long and we had a good time, didn't we? Oh yeah, uh, that yeah. was a that was a mess. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> if you're if you're in the uh, live chat, you know, jump in, say hello. We'd love to uh, love to see you and uh, hear from you. Of course, I'm having trouble pulling up the live chat right now. Oh, there it is. Uh, so what we have tonight are two beers from Dogfish Head. The first is Liquid Truth Serum IPA. Yeah, this is, uh, this one brand new comes at 6.8% and it's got a whole bunch of different, uh, variations in the, in the hop build. I'm pouring this in my nice East end glass. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, yeah, I'm pouring go. mine in a nice complimentary hotel cup. There you go. Yeah, you're in Baltimore right now. You're on your way to Atlanta. Yeah, stopped for the yeah. night to stay and uh, flying out tomorrow morning. So. Nice, nice. All right, now I got a little surprise for you. Quinn, why don't you come over here? So for the viewers at home, <laughs> say hello. She really wanted to jump on. But oh, my God. But to come on, she, she has to give what a, a uh, sniff review. You ready? All right. Take a big whiff. It smells like beer. It smells like beer. It does. <laughs> Are you picking up any other notes in there? Sour stuff. What? Sour stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, she wanted to say hello to everyone because she sees me down here podcasting all the time. Now She's tired. She said hello, and she is tired. Time to go to bed. Okay. Good night, Daddy. Right. Say goodbye to everyone. <laughs> I actually said she's hired. Like we're gonna, we, we should hire her. She's better. Oh, she is hired. Yeah, she's got sure. better taste than we do. No, sometimes I can get her to like really pull out uh, various uh, notes out of the beers, like orange or coffee or something that's really bold. But uh, this time, nah, she's too tired. So, uh, <laughs> woo tubed. <laughs> That's a great uh, username. Asked IPA in a bottle, never more. Yet IPA in a bottles are becoming a rarity. You know? It's, yeah, it's a real pisser. I, For an old school guy like me, anyway, I, I always dug having having the bottles. I always like having bottles around. Yeah, it, it seems uh, weird. It, <laughs> it went from like uh, beers being in in bottles as being, you know, the way that. You showed you were having something a little bit better. So now we have everyone is, gets excited about having it in a can. And, and what, what they want is pounders, right? And, you know, bottled beer, that, that's passe. So things change, man. Oh, man. The nose on this is uh, pretty good. It's not, it's, it's not necessarily something I'd expect out of dogfish, which is really usually, you know, punchy in the nose, kind of hop profile right up front uh i'm gonna look what this kind of, up. do we know do we know what kind of hops are in this or are you still looking it up i'm gonna i'm gonna look it up this would be the uh you know the, the research i should do it ahead of time ah who cares but uh of course i gotta tell them how old i am God, that's a pain in the ass why can't they ever remember me just i hate co- i mean we have cookies we have the way to do this all right so 6.8 percent 65 ibus uh, style IPA. Let's let's. I'll give you the quick and dirty here. You can handle the truth. Myth: IBUs hop bitterness can only be achieved in the boil. Truth. Uh huh. Okay, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. The truth is, do- is Dogfish Head has been doing innovative things in the world of hopping since we opened in the mid '90s. From our continual hopping method found in our 60, 90, and 120 minute IPAs to our latest innovation of post boil hop additions found in our liquid truth serum. Our unique process involving 
pelletized, powdered, leaf, and liquefied hops. Makes for a blissfully inefficient IPA. It's truthfully hoppy without being deceptively bitter. That doesn't make sense. You'll find the perfect match of citrusy and tropical notes making for a zesty finish. Honest. What's deceptively bitter without being deceptively bitter? What does that even mean? I, I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Um, it doesn't tell us what the what hops they use. They just use four different methodologies of hopping. Sorry, I keep losing you. I'm, for anyone who wants me to pull back the curtain a little bit, I forgot. Uh, I, the, the Wi-Fi at this hotel is shit. So I'm tethered to my phone, which should be good, but my computer keeps trying to reject it. So I apologize in advance if I do like a, a freeze frame moment there. So, or if I don't respond, that's probably why. So, but, uh, so what are you thinking of this? It's, it's fruity. It's good. Sam can really tell a story. That's for sure. Yeah, he can. Um, I, I, I gotta be honest. I, I don't know. I, I really don't know what's going on with this. It, it's, if it's a little bit boring. Yeah, I mean it's it's fine. I mean I can see drinking a few of these. I, the flavor's not over the top. It's not it's not over or underwhelming. It's like kind of a right in the middle, like a flat line. Yeah, uh, it's not really anything all that special in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not overly bitter. You know, sixty to ninety minutes are are bitter. You know, IPAs. I guess this is less so. Um, Have you had a sixty or ninety recently? Uh, I had, I had a couple of them over the summer, but no, I, I, I did see that they start putting the 90 minutes in cans and pounders, which is intriguing. I want to try that. Yeah. And, uh, I just tasting those, the, those styles that they use with the roasted malts and everything. It's a, it puts me in the way back machine to what, you know, one of the first quote unquote IPAs that I regularly drank. And, uh, so I'm always willing to give these guys a fair shake. Yeah. I look. Dogfish doesn't make a bad beer. They don't. None of their beers are bad. Each one of them is well executed, um, well done. I, I think that uh, some of their some of their music collaborations have been uh, more interesting than others. But uh, by and large, uh, the positive beers, contact and the Miles Davis bitches brew are great. Positive contact, I did not like. That was the one with this with the uh, cider in it, right? Uh, yeah, it was like an apple type beer. I love it. I hated it. But I also uh, like the music collab that it was with, so maybe I was a little yeah. skewed in that direction. Well, Bitches Brew is now going to be a regular release in uh, on their new calendar. You can uh, We'll put a link to the calendar in the show notes. But uh, it, it's, it's going to be a regular release for 2018, which should be uh, rather interesting. In fact, I'll just drop it in the, in the uh, chat room right now. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Uh, yeah, so Bitches Brew is really good, and then they they are collaborating with the Flaming Lips for this Ooh, year too. There you go. So that's their music collaboration. Um, yeah, with tube they take sixty ninety minute. They taste so malty now. Uh, I don't know if I. I guess I guess maybe they're. I can understand where you're coming from on that one. I don't know if I'd say they taste malty. I guess our palates have shifted. You know, uh, what I would say is that they had more of a hearty backbone. Um, and that they, they definitely have, have that. Yeah. That, that maltiness is for me a backbone. That's part of the reason why I really like uh, the uh, nugget nectar. The, you know, it's an imperial amber. That maltiness is a backbone that holds those hops up higher. Uh, you know, it's just not, it, it's, it's, in my opinion, it's more balanced, but that balance also, I think also makes it a little bit more dynamic. So sure, that's yeah. just the way I look at it. They're a throwback to, to an older style IPA too, that uh, a lot of people coming up who might just be getting into IPAs probably don't even, it's probably like a foreign concept to them with all these big, huge new England styles that are out there right now. Yeah, it makes me wonder if, if we're raising a, a, a newer generation of uh, craft beer drinkers that just don't have an appreciation for, you know, a a beer that's, you know, in the 100 plus IBU scale, something that's really intensely uh, bitter and hoppy and, and just is, you know, aggressive, that we've gone soft in flavor profiles, which now, you know, makes it more difficult for them to expand their palates. I think that the aggressive IPAs 
made it easier to expand your palette out into other uh, styles. Either they be ESBs or into, uh, you know, things like maybe an alt beer or, or later on into, into uh, maybe the more German style uh, beers that it, it was, a, if you start out with just New England style IPAs and all this soft and fruity juiciness, you know, are you able to transition to these more aggressive styles? One thing I do love. Drinking out of tiny plastic cups, I am rocketing this beer down my gullet. <laughs> it is, like this is it. That's We're it. Done. Wow, you're wow, you're moving quickly. Uh, we should probably move quickly because you're on battery power and you're on a Wi-Fi connection. Let's see what it says here. One hour left on the battery. Oh, you're. Oh, we can go all night. <laughs> yeah, that means I have to lug this goddamn thing through an airport. Dead and everything. Dead. Actually, no. So I'll just leave it in the car. There you go. So anyone looking in, in for a, a parking lot? That's in, okay. anyone looking for a, a half-assed uh, laptop? It'll be sitting in his car in, in Baltimore. Check it out. It's an it's an i seven. It's got eight gigs of RAM, but it is five six years old. So Ooh. yeah, it's coming towards the end of its life. My parents grew up watching black and white TV. I can appreciate it, but I don't watch it. There you go. Woo tubed with a I. I think that's a. Uh, that's a pretty profound way of putting it. Yeah, True. I, I agree. I agree. Did you see I, the, you the meme? Did you see the Twitter meme that was going around? Explain something that young people wouldn't understand yeah. nowadays. Yeah, I, right I put the, uh, 89 cent gas. Oh, remember <laughs> Sheets used to do 89 for 89 Tuesdays or whatever, oh, 87 yeah. for 87. Mine yeah. was uh, when you had to rent the phone from the phone company. You never, Ooh. you didn't own your phone. That's yeah. the way back machine right there. Yeah, that is. I, and then like were, Radio Shack started carrying phones when you could actually buy your own. Like that was a big fucking deal. Well, the thing is when you rented it from the phone company, those were good phones. They were solid. They worked. You know, they were nice, big, and heavy phones. They were awesome. That was back when you could clock a motherfucker with a phone and just kill him. Like, <laughs> you could hang up on people. You're like, yeah. Yeah, and it gave a good ding when you did it. Yeah, the bell inside would ding. Like you were yeah, like, a yes. real bell, a real bell. Our, our kids want to, I mean, well, my kids, they, the concept of a dial tone, <laughs> what, what's that? What's a dial tone? You know? Yeah, like seriously. Yeah, or, oh, wait, you guys, like, you guys had to pay for long distance? Like, remember <laughs> the long distance wars and every third commercial was like, yeah. how much are you paying for long distance? Yeah. And there were, like, three competing phone books, like the Donnelly Directory, the Bell Telephone Book. I forget what the third one was, but. Uh, no, uh, there, um, and then there was the the, the concept of uh, a party line, which which my parents talked about, which was you know you had multiple houses on the same line. They, yeah, I never experienced that. That was a really like you had to live pretty rural for that to happen. Yeah. But until they updated all the lines, that was a thing where you could pick up your phone and just hear somebody on, talking, having a whole conversation. Yep. That, yep. that was the height of spying. Like you, That's when you could get away with shit. Like, that was back when you could legit like call people and prank them, and they couldn't oh, do yeah. anything about it. J John uh, Dormer, Winamp. Oh, God, Winamp. It really licks the llama's ass or whatever the fuck, llama's balls or whatever the hell that thing <laughs> said. You'd open it up. Mm. Winamp. Winamp. That, that, wow, we're going, we're going deep on that one. Real player. That's what nobody. <laughs> real, real player. Is that the one that uh, that the basketball guy? Uh, what's his name? He owns the Mavericks. Is that the one he did? What did he do? I can't remember. Oh well. And I think I lost Ed for 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 a moment here. So I, I'm going to review I'm this back. beer. I'm back. Oh, you're it, back. It ticks out for like 20 seconds every once in a while. Yeah. So we'll we'll live. That's all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna review this beer while while. While we're doing that, I'm gonna. Uh, those are kind of muted for me. There's just not a whole lot going on. I'd say it's a little bit of papaya, a little bit of those tropical notes. I go to papaya all the time with tropical. <laughs> uh, the nose is kind of muted. There's just not a whole lot going on here. Uh, the color is. It, it's not as hazy as it's probably looking here on on your screen. It's just. It's it's just a little bit hazy. Color's kind of nice. Yeah. Not much of a head retention. Um, the body is light and crisp. 
uh, the the notes as far as the the uh, the flavors are pretty much the same as the aroma. Kind of muted, tropical, easy drinking. It, it goes down pretty quick. This is a drinking beer. Six point eight percent. I I'm gonna rate this one. It's totally inoffensive. It's kind of boring, but you you should probably check it out. Maybe you'll enjoy it more than I will. I'm going to give this one a six. I think this is a really drinkable beer, and I took the last little bit out of that bottle so you guys could see a little bit. I don't know if it's showing up any clearer. It it really is clearer than uh, Bill was showing there. That's just lighting issues, but um, it it's – it's good. It's it's nothing phenomenal. It's not going to knock you off your off your feet or anything. It's really drinkable. I just drank this thing at what I would consider light speed for me. Uh, so I don't know. I, I think I'm going to bump you one up a little bit. I think I'm going to give this a six and a half. I think it's definitely worth checking out. And I think that people could find themselves drinking this at a tailgate or something like that. Definitely. Um, you know, even at six point eight, you don't get any of that. And then I thought it was an easy drinker. Not too bad, and it's got it's got a little bit of fruitiness, a little tropicalness to it, and I, I think it's it's unoffensive, if if not just you know kind of unassuming, and it's a fun one. I like it. I I think that this for me falls in line more with the flesh and blood, and uh, the lupu luau. Interesting beers that really didn't necessarily hold my attention for very long, uh, whereas Sequench was a beer that I loved all summer. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, when, when I think of like great dogfish beers, I, I'm thinking of Burton Baton, 90 Minute, 120, obviously, Bitches Brew that we mentioned. Uh, the, the Fort, which is actually coming back in 2018. Oh, the Fort. I absolutely love Fort. Amazing. I, I've got a 2008 bottle of Fort that's just sitting in my cellar. And what's the the red and white and the uh, blue, black and blue, black and blue? Those are phenomenal as well. Those are great. Uh, we will not be seeing either of those in um, in twenty eighteen though. Well, but I'm happy to see Ford come back. Fuck you, Sam. Bring me my, <laughs> give me my red and whites. I, I like. I, I I haven't had the uh, Syracuse Nera yet either. I really want to try that one. Um, I'm hoping that my wife brings a uh, four pack of that back from the beach for me. She's gonna be there this weekend. So we'll, we'll see. All right. Anything else on uh, Liquid Truth Serum? A dumb name, by the way. I, don't, I think the name's dumb. Uh, yeah, I would say. I, I think it's I think it, it's a cool name, but not for this beer. Like, I don't think it, it fits the beer itself. It's kind of like when you look at a kid and you're like, why did you name your kid that? And you're like, it doesn't look like. And some kids, yeah. some kids look like a Caleb, and some kids do not. Like, you know. <laughs> this beer... It, Liquid Truth Serum should have been for a beer that was like 14% and drank like five. Yeah, like a big We Heavy. Uh, you love a We Heavy. We should do a We Heavy review on here some point soon. I, I know you're a big fan. All right, uh, we're moving on to number two, which is the Pennsylvania Tuxedo. Oh, boy, I poured, the, poured that one pretty aggressively there. Big I'm, I'm doing a party foul. I'm going right back into the same glass. Oh, I did the same thing. I don't care. I think that's so overrated. Uh, I know. Uh, I wish. I just wish I had a better. I, I like telling stories about my glasses when I do these. So, yeah. Ooh. Oh man. I'll, t- oh, I'll tell a story about my glass in a second. The nose uh, on this one is, is just piney, piney, piney. Oh my gosh. I, yeah, I had this last year, uh, Black Friday, for the first time ever, and I. Now that I'm smelling it, I don't even remember drinking it. Uh, I don't remember it being this piney last year. My God. No, absolutely not. Oh. Now, I did a review of this beer when it first came out. I think that was in 2016 for my website. No, sorry, 2015. Uh, and compared it to the um, DTF by Zero Day, their Douglas Tree for a beer. And uh, I... Wow. Hey, DTF, get it? DTF, <laughs> Douglas Treefer. Who means Douglas Treefer? Sure it does. <laughs> and uh, it's where Theo and company put a whole tree right into the boil. I mean, a whole fucking tree right into the boil, which I which can't imagine. Which they just did again, by the way. Yeah, I I, I figured he was good. He was doing it again because uh, it's it's about that time. Now, right, 
right now he's somewhere in Italy. It's his birthday. Do you know where he went? Uh, yeah, he and his uh, lady friend it, it went out to Italy for his birthday. And I have literally gotten in the past two days, no shit, 100 Snapchats at least from him. Really? I'm, I must be I mean, I, I, I got them from the airports. I got them from hotels. I'm getting them from chapels. Now, a lot of this is in our little Midtown group. Yeah, he's going nuts. So check out oh, yeah. his story. Oh, yeah, he is. Oh, my God. I, he's I've gotten Florida. at least – yeah, I've gotten at least 25 gelato Snapchats. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see a bunch of churches. Well, he's eating gelato and champagne at the same time. He took, a pic- he took a picture of uh, David's dick. There you go. Yeah. I, well, yeah. I'm glad I got to see it twice today. Yeah. Yeah. David, not cut. Um, there's David's ass. It's very European. It is very European. Get yeah. It? It's a dick. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, uh, man, he has a bazillion of them. Wow. So, yeah, uh, happy birthday, Theo. Today's his birthday. Oh, uh, yeah. Happy birthday, T-Man. Okay. So, uh, Douglas Street for DTF is, it's it's not the same beer, but it's the same kind of concept. You know, D- Pennsylvania Tuxedo, they take spruce pit, spruce tips, and they put them... <laughs> I know spruce tits, no. spruce tips, and put them into the beer. Yeah, uh, yep. and, and this is a collaboration with Woolworth, which is weird. Like, why are Wool- I don't Wool- understand? Woolrich. Woolworth was a store. That was a store. It's the five and dime. Woolrich. Why? Why are they collaborating with Woolrich? That makes sense. God, uh, who knows? I mean, I don't know why they do anything. I love the outfits these guys have on, though. I have a shirt that looks very much like this, and I wish I would have thought to have brought it so, so I could have worn it. It could have uh, looked good. Yeah, it, it is pretty sharp. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I mean, you're like, we want to do a collaboration. Let's do it with a flannel company. I, I don't know. So uh, DTF is like this beer taken to 11. Um, the it's uh, much more intense in, in the pineiness and, and the resiny uh, flavors. But this year, that, that might not be so true. I mean, the nose on this is just, so, it's like a Christmas tree. Good Lord. It's so yeah, good. it's really out. Ed froze again, so I'll just talk for a little while. Um, oh, I, I'm glad we did this one second. Wow. They really cranked the, 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 uh, the flavor of the 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 pine up to up way way high. Yeah. Now, I'm not. Sh- oh God, I'm not sure I like this anymore. I'm I don't not think sure the, I like this. Before. I don't think the flavor is as aggressive as the scent. Is what I was saying before my tethering cut out there. But uh, I, I think it's fine. I think it's it's good. Spruce is tough. I really 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 like the Yards Tavern Spruce from their Ales of the Revolution. I think that one's done brilliantly because it has. Well, here we go with the backbone conversation again. It has more backbone to it, and it really helps even out the over-aggressive spruce flavor. Um, you know, and I think that that should be the model of how you do a spruce beer, uh, as are all the other ales of the Revolution. They're all brilliant. Um, yeah, this is fine. I don't think it's bad. Um, again, so I mean, we're I, I'm my guts are telling me to land in about the same spot that I landed with the truth serum here, but. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not sure I, I particularly care for this one. The Tavern uh, Ale that you spoke of from Yards is, I think, superior to this. I think that the pininess of that one is more subtle, uh, and it, it makes it more of a sessionable beer. And it's a, it's a heartier, darker beer, too. Like, it, it, this one's a little clear for my taste. If you're going to put spruce in a beer, you better have... You know, it better have some balls behind it just to, you know, it's flavors. You got to you got to try and balance stuff out. It's the same thing we bitch about with enough boom in their stouts when they bourbon barrel age them because you just lose it. You're like, ah, now you just got a flat bourbon bomb. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I got to tell you, this one's this one's not working for me. It's really not. No. no. No, I'm 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 really disappointed in it. Uh, 
I don't know. I it's just way too piney. Mm -hmm. mm. You no, know well, I guess that's the thing. If you don't if you don't like spruce flavored, you're not gonna like this at all. I, I, I generally do. I feel like maybe it tastes a little bit on the artificial side. That's the problem. Oh, well, that could be an issue too. Not like they put a real tree inside of it. No, I, it, it's almost like kind of like pine saw. Mm. It's not working for me right this year. I don't know what it is. Let me go do the floors with a click. Quick, and I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Wootubed. He's been great in the chat room today. This guy, this guy's the Viking tonight. Yeah, check out the Woolrich website. Cool story. I'll definitely do that, and we'll 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 throw it we'll throw it into the show notes. This is an 8.5% beer. I had no idea. Yeah, it's 8.5. 8. It's sold in a four-pack. Um, I think it's right to sell it in a four-pack. Look, I'm coming down a little hard on this beer, maybe. I think this beer is fine if you split it or if you're having one. This is sure. not a beer to have multiples of. Uh, this is probably the last beer of the night because, uh, to be frank, you're, you're bombing out your, uh, your palate with this one. You're you're not gonna, whew, you're you're not gonna uh, you're not gonna drink this and then you know go on to some other uh, Chris Pilsner and be like oh no no that I'm picking up all the all the salties of that beer this one <laughs> this one's gonna blow you out yeah this is a it's a it's a little aggressive especially if you're not used to this type of beer um, I, this is what I would consider kind of an acquired taste for just about anybody. I, I, it doesn't bother me too much, but um, yeah, it's a little aggressive. I like what I, I kind of dig that they, one thing I have to give dogfish head credit for is they are. Uh, well, you froze. So I'm going to, I'm going to guess you're going to say they're not afraid to go big. I think one of the things they do is that they pull beers or styles you know, off the shelf and then try to try to do them bigger and more boldly. Is they, that, is that where you were going to go? Yeah. Sorry. I'm back. And that one was quicker than the last one. Uh, it, they have the balls to just kind of do anything. Like they'll try anything and he'll go crazy. Like when he did the to Hank it for that jackass TV show he did and they went and they dug up all that Egyptian roots or whatever bullshit it was. Uh, that beer was pretty good. And it was, but it wasn't for everybody. But you had to give them respect for what they tried to do with it, and they just try anything and everything. And I kind of, I, I kind of appreciate that in a way, like the the mad science part of it, all the while keeping their you know flagship and main beers. They've always been good. So, yeah, I, I agree. I think that I think that they've always been uh, unafraid to try something that's new, innovative, or different. Um, I, I think that they are they were seriously at risk when they got when they got big of you know playing it safe. Just keep cranking out the same kind of stuff we've always done. Uh, they haven't done that. I think that they've tried to 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 continue to be innovative. They've tried to uh, remain uh, a little bit quirky and strange, but have done so to their own success. But even think about their earlier beers. Think about their, their first main beers. They had the Raison d'Etre. Who the hell was doing a beer like that? The Midas Touch, the Big Golden Nail. I mean, those are beers. I mean, they had the balls to do a 120-minute IPA. I mean, that, that took guts. And so they weren't – they were always experimenting in my book. But I, I think a lot, of, a lot of times people take that kind of stuff for granted. Even their Indian Brown. The way that that's all chocolatey and malty, I think, is kind of a step out of a normal brown ale, and I, I think they deserve a lot, a lot more credit for building a foundation of experimentation and kind of thinking outside the box than they probably get, just because they've been around so long, and they're one of those like, oh yeah, dogfish, we remember those guys, or I visited them when I went to the beach or whatever. Yeah, I I agree with that. I th I I think that um, they they have been unafraid for a long time, and that that's a big deal. Uh, Wootoop, why can't they make a mass-produced stout? Worldwide stout is great, but who can drink more than one of those? Um, I can drink chicory, one of those. chicory stout, chicory stout. That's true. Good point. Chicory stout. Uh, Wootoop, they have chicory stout. Although I will say it's tough to drink more than one of those. Oh, <laughs> well, all right. Um, no, they they don't have um, 
a stout that is uh, <laughs> that that's easy going. What, well, what, I would wonder. I, I'm curious as to what WooTube considers a like a mass producible stout. Like, are we talking like a Murphy's? a Bell's Kalamazoo? Well, Murphy's is a little light, but like a Bell's Kalamazoo, Rogue uh, Shakespeare, maybe uh, something like that. Yeah, These I, are both uh, phenomenal beers. Well, I they are. Them. They are. I, I I will say I was a little bit disappointed in the uh, vanilla barrel aged. Uh, worldwide stout. I got a four pack of it. I drank one. I had one on tap at the brewery. I was hoping for a little bit more. I still uh, haven't had it. That's that's one that just kind of zoom went right past me, and I was like, oh. And I, I still see people drinking them. <laughs> so, I, I got you. I got you. I'll take care of you. Oh, uh, you you've always got me. I I owe you so many beers at this point. By the way, thanks for the thanks for the beer delivery earlier today before I got in the car to come down. <laughs> Hey, no problem. No problem. Hey, uh, next, next week is on you though. I, I, and I'm thinking we need to do Strauss or Strop. Sorry, not Strauss. Ugh. We should do Strop next week. <laughs> Strop, the Strauss of Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah, we should do Strop. We should, or we, I, I might be bringing back, you know, some ATL goodness. Oh, and that's we right. Could, we could drop it and drop it like it's hot. Atlanta style while you again have to reset your 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 connection to your phone. I at least I'm getting really quick with picking up when 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 you're gonna get logged out here. <laughs> yeah, there we go. It, did I at least get frozen on the drop it and cross it? Uh, you you got you got frozen on the on making the A, but the, not to drop it and cross it. I didn't oh, know that was a thing. We can drop it and cross it. Yeah, that's how you do. That's how we do in the in the A town, baby. Yes. That's, yeah. That Ti and I are buddies. That's what I'm saying. I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. <laughs> that guy would uh, never give me the time of day. We we, uh, what what places are you hoping to visit down in Atlanta on your uh, long weekend there? Uh, my buddy. Uh, well, first off, uh, my buddy. There was a place we visited last year that was still under construction called Hopsticks, and the whole thing is it's it's a brew pub, and they're doing like an Asian fusion thing. And apparently their beers are amazing. Um, we're definitely doing the Wrecking Bar. I'm doing the Wrecking Bar Strong Beer Fest again this year. I get to work it, which means I get to go for free. And this is all beers 8% and up. And it's, it is an amazing, amazing brew fest. So that'll be good. We'll always go to the Porter. Uh, that's, a, that's a definite. But now they changed the laws so we can get growlers and crowlers. So he, my buddy down there, God bless him. He's known me for 17 years. I've been going down to do this Falcon trip. And uh, he carts me around and we just go, he knows he's a certified beer judge. So he knows all the places to go and uh, God bless him. I, I can't wait to see some of the new places that we have. So I'm hoping that I can get um, some uh, creature comforts to bring back for you guys. So we can review that. Um, their, their one IPA is definitely one of the Souths. Uh, it's kind of like the nugget nectar of the South a little bit where people kind of go bananas for it. Um, and it, it's a really good beer. So and I'm, I'm anxious to see what some other places are doing now that the New England style has come through and made its made its huge footprint and see if anybody's doing something like that down there. But, you know, definitely want to hit Monday night, um, uh, possibly jailbreak. Definitely want to hit three taverns. Uh, I, and now I'm going to blank. I'm, I'm running out of brain power. But <laughs> Wow. Hey, um, speaking of Nugget Nectar, we are six weeks away. Uh, roughly, give or take, from uh, Nugget Nectar dropping here in Central PA. Ooh. Maybe seven. I mean, I'll be here before you know it. Tomorrow, uh, Wild Elf releases at Trogues. Wild oh. Elf. Yeah, it, it's brewery exclusive. Will not hit distribution. Oh, boy. Yeah. And uh, shortly after that, you're going to be seeing the Dear Peter, which, um, you know, we got to, we got to, uh, we got to try that. Yeah, I thought it was really good. I loved it. Yeah, I, I thought it was fantastic. Really excited for that. The um, the what, what's the uh, what's the other one? The golden nail that the splinter. It's coming out in twenty eighteen. Nebulous, nebulous is still, oh, yeah, that's, it's still ways off. That's the one I'm really excited about because that's basically split. My saying it's splinter gold, um, rebranded a bit and and coming out in twenty eighteen. So. Lots of fun stuff coming from Trogues down the pike. All right. Uh, before, before in case my computer dies or anything, one place that I forgot to mention, 
and God help me, this is the worst place for me to forget. Max Loggers in downtown Atlanta is one of the coolest places you're ever going to go. He does a lot of German style beers, uh, but he also, JR, the owner and brewer, is the coolest dude and treats us like gods when we go in there. And he makes such good beer. He's winning awards for it. And he's just so in touch with everything. And anybody who comes to Atlanta, I would recommend you go there, especially if you're in the downtown area. There's a Mars stop like three blocks away. You can't miss it. It's it's a great time and it's a great venue. It's really cool. Are you going to go to the Varsity and get a... Uh, what do you have? Too? What do you have? What do you have? I've never been to the Varsity. I've never done any touristy thing in Atlanta ever, except for the Falcons games. I've never been to World of Coke. I've never been to their goddamn stupid... And you're frozen again. Uh, one of the things that WooTube is offering up uh, is Mr. Beal Texas Barbecue. Mr. Beal Texas Barbecue. WooTube, if you want to follow Ed on Snapchat, my best, my my guess is you should reach out to him on uh, Twitter and ask him there. Maybe slip into the DMs at yeah, Ed so, Roll. Yeah, I'll I'll send you the little. Uh, yeah. QR code or whatever. Sure. Throw the yeah. Throw the QR code on your Twitter, and we can follow you there. Yeah, and uh, I hope you prepared for a lot of uh, late night old school rap binges while I'm drunk on a Friday or Saturday night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, you, you ready to rate this one before you freeze up again? Yeah, let's rate it. All right. What you're up? Okay. I don't think it's uh, as aggressive as you do. Our palates are a little bit different. I think it's good. I don't think it's great. Again, you know it, but it's something different, which I I do appreciate. I do like the yards tavern spruce uh, better, but you know this is this is an adventurous beer. It's a little bit bigger than I would have liked, you know, for a beer of this style. Uh, I think I'm gonna. I think this is a tie with the truth serum, and I'm gonna give it. I think I give it a six point five. I hope I'm remembering that correctly, and uh, I think that's right where it should be. It's not bad by any means. It's not earth chattering, but it's drinkable if you like this type of beer. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm pretty much right there with you. Um, I think it's I think it's more aggressive than it was in years past, as far as my recollection was with this beer. I think that um, I think this this beer is true to um, it is true to who Dogfish is. And that that's a big deal for me. That you know, this is this is how Dogfish wants their beers to be. They want them to be innovative, aggressive, and intense. Um, they'd use the term "off-centered." I think that that's a nebulous term; doesn't really mean much. Uh, in this case, I think that this beer is well executed and it's very good. Um, I I have some problems with how piney it is. But look, that, that's what this beer is supposed to be. And so for me, I'm actually going to give this one a seven and a half. Um, it's a little bit, I wouldn't say it's one note. It's more like two or three note. And there are beers out there that that play full melodies. Um, and so for that, it gets a seven and a half. Wow, I didn't expect you to come in. You always throw me a curveball. Like I was, I thought you were gonna like completely drop the people's elbow on this, and then I give a score, oh. and then you come in and just, you, you just, you're like, nope, your score <laughs> sucks. I'm like, ah. Uh, I well, I, I look, I go first on the first beer, you go first on the second beer. You know, I mean, what do you want me to do? Yeah, and well, from now on, if I'm doing the second beer, I'm giving everything a ten just to put the pressure on you. <laughs> so you'd be like, "What the fuck is wrong with me?" <laughs> uh, you know, we'll tube one of those. Last sip better than the first. Um, yeah, I, I think the last sip is better than the first. As this beer is warmed up, it, it's opened a little bit more, and, it, and the pininess gets, I think, a little bit more help from from uh, the rest of the beer. Yeah. Would it work as a blended beer with Miller Lite? Maybe that's a terrible idea. No, I don't think that would work. Uh, I'll get back to you on that. Definitely. <laughs> All right. Hey, you have any other beers lined up for tonight, Ed? Uh, well, hang on. Let me mouse over my little battery here. I have 16 minutes left on my battery, so if uh, you want to get some, let's. Uh, uh, you know, no, nah, no, nah, we're done. You got to be able to power that thing on when you get when you go through the. Uh, through the uh, TSA, so 
So you I'm, can't power I'm, it on. They're not going to let you take it. I'm oh, gonna, leaving. I'm, I'm going to do an experiment. Uh, th this hotel, I'm at the A loft, uh, which. And you're frozen now. You you uh, it froze beautifully though. It's like. Uh. <laughs> it's a good look. It was a good look. All right. So all right, uh, now we're back. <laughs> and you're back. It, you're talking about your hotel. Oh yeah, and it's like this nice, like moderny thing, as you can kind of see. Like they have this, like you know, kind of ultra modern look. And it got these horrible reviews, and people are like, "The rooms are old and everything." I'm like, "This place is perfectly fine. The staff is friendly." And I just went, maybe I'll do an experiment. I'll just leave the laptop here by a by accident, and then call and be like, "Hey, I was in room, you know, five fourteen. Can you uh, check and see if my laptop is still there? And if it is, and they send it to me, I'll be like." You're getting five stars on TripAdvisor, <laughs> owls or whatever the fuck it is. I don't know. Five stars. Uh, <laughs> real quick, if you're if you're in the live chat, what are you drinking tonight? Woo tubed. Uh, I'm drinking frozen, frozen ocean, ocean, which I think we have right now. Yeah, we do. It's, I yeah. have it. I have it right here, actually. Oh, there you go. Woo tubed. How are you liking that one? Uh, uh, I I had the um, the master shredder. Earlier tonight, yeah. which is a wheat IPA by by Vale by by the same people who made uh, Frozen Frozen Ocean Ocean, and um, I I think that the Master Master Shredder Shredder is just worlds better than than the than the single. It, it's just not nearly as good. Uh, I do think it's interesting when we get these Vale beers to like try the double versus the single. And, oh, and you're holding it up. Yeah, there's the Frozen Frozen Ocean Ocean. There now I need to do one called Billy Billy Ocean Ocean. I think that would be. Should, <laughs> we, you and I should brew that together. There you go. Bit quick. Spe speaking of uh, stuff, people are going to brew real quick. Uh, Owls of Hampton Pizza Boy. Um, I, try, I was trying to convince him to do a IPL version of Magic Underwear, that Simcoe bomb that they did for uh, Fez of July. For our buddy Fez Herb, and he he says he's going to do it. Uh, be, behold the power of Twitter suggestion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, Good for you. Well, I you know what? I I kind of thought that that was that that was a likely beer to try to sneak in there for him. Um, I I know Al really likes Simcoe, which are which frankly are the thinking man's hops in my opinion. There, and, and I, I did inquire about them uh, on Black Friday with a couple of brewers, and they were like, yeah, they're making a huge comeback right now. Simcoe. Yeah. Nice. And I yes. don't know. They were hesitant to tell me whether it was a cost thing or just like an old school thing, but they said, yeah, they're making a big comeback. Like everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Simcoe, I, I say it's the thinking man's hop, uh, mostly because I just like it so much and I care about myself more than anything. <laughs> but. But I, I no, I'm legitimately excited to see him come back. Uh, you know, I, I I like them when they're like really cat boxy and funky and earthy and crazy. Uh, Simcoe was the first hop that I could legit identify in a beer. Not Citra. No, nope. I, I didn't uh, know Citra till five years later. After that, at yeah, least people yeah. people back in the early two thousands weren't the, the Citra didn't Citra. exist. No. Yeah, S Simcoe's the shit. Uh, but an IPL with Simcoe, I think, would be really interesting. Just bomb the shit out of it with Simcoe. Oh, yeah. So, there you go. What, yeah. what percent are you thinking here? Are we talking like a seven? Oh, yeah. It's at least seven. If I get if I get eight out of that, I'd be really bummed. Simcoe's delicate. Like the uh, the uh, Weyerbacher double Simcoe isn't as crazy, but I think that's because the alcohol is pumped up too much. Right. Yeah, the alcohol so burns wanna, it out. You got to reel it back a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Well, hey. Uh oh, I'm getting it. No, I shut. You're still there. You're still here, dude. So I think we're done. Hey, and and with that, I'm gonna hit stop. <laughs> it was fun. We had to race the battery for for Ed's poor computer. I don't think we beat it. Hey, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. I'm gonna hit stop. <laughs>